Welcome back. This is Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos. And today we are going to be doing a felt ornament inspired travel tumbler. This is my fourth Christmas tumbler that I've made so far. As you guys know, I have a playlist put together on my channel if you guys want to check that out when you guys are ready to make your Christmas tumblers. So grab your favorite drink and let's get to this. Today I'm going to be using a hog 20 ounce skinny tumbler that I purchased from the Stainless Depot, but please feel free to use any tumbler you have on hand for your project. I'm going to prep that and I'm going to paint it gold this time, not white. Look at me, <laughs> switching it up. I'm painting it gold because that's going to be underneath the crackle that I plan on doing. So like I said, I am just leaving it this gold color, but if you'd like to kind of jazz it up, please. You can use my gold if you'd like. <laughs> if you wanted to do a glitter base under the crackle, I would apply the glitter and then I would apply another coat of epoxy and then obviously do the crackle over top of that. For the crackle, I just purchased Art Mines from Michael's Craft Store. I'll make sure to put this in the description below. Um, I have a crackle medium and then the chalk paint is just called porcelain. Now I would have used a foam brush for this, but my kids stole it. So I have to use this brush that I, I'm so glad I found. <laughs> I'm shocked I found it actually. I'm gonna load my crackle medium up really well onto my tumbler. The thicker it is, the more crackle you will have. So I'm gonna go wash my brush, put it up on the fridge until I need to use it again. So that way the kids don't steal it. I actually used a blow dryer to, you know, make the process go a little bit quicker because this stuff kind of takes a while to dry. So I'm going to get my paint together here and putting my brush up on the fridge worked because I still have it. <laughs> now after I get my paint onto my fancy little coaster dish here, I'm just going to smear that out like that, like so. There we go. Okay, put that off to the side. Okay, now I have my brush. <laughs> now the trick to crackle paint, as most of you may already know, but for those that don't, you just want to do one swipe or try to do one swipe that's it you want to get it done as quick as possible because that crackle starts to starts to go right away so see how quick i'm doing it here and then just do the bottom real good and don't touch it don't touch it anymore okay well i touched it right there but still okay but if you can see here it's already starting to crackle that's how fast this stuff works and if you touch it it'll mess that crackle up so I actually would kind of like the little spaces that were left. It, it makes it look even more antique. And that's the look that I was kind of going for. I want it to look kind of old school Christmas. So to speed up the process, I used my blow dryer once again. And as you can see, that pretty effect that is left. Those beautiful crackle stripes throughout it and that gold just kind of shimmering through. That's exactly the look I was looking for. So I mixed up some A and B. I like to use Illumilite's Amazing Clear Cast for this. And I'm gonna put a nice stripe on the front, mix it in really well. And then I'm gonna put a nice stripe on the back, mix it in really well. I'm gonna let it turn on my turner for about eight hours because I want it to be nice and cured when I go to apply my vinyls. Another great thing about doing any type of crackle painting is you can use any type of medium you'd like. You could use the glue method that I've seen around. You could use this, but there's really, I mean, you can't really mess this up. I mean, it's supposed to look antique. It's supposed to look distressed. So there's really no right or wrong when it comes to doing these crackle finishes and they are absolutely beautiful in the end. So I really love that old school felt ornaments. I just, they're so cute. So I went into Pinterest and I just kind of searched up uh, felt ornaments and I liked that one, but I didn't want to do the buttons So I kept scrolling and kept looking at what they had here. There was another one that was really cute as well It's coming up here in a second this one. Oh my gosh. That was so cute I, I probably could have done that one as well that that was really cute But what really caught my eye were these white and red ones I thought those were really easy to do and I thought that anybody could do that So that's what I'm going to be doing today 
So I went back over to my Cricut Studio and they already have a circle, a heart, and a star already there for me. So I just got them all prepped there, made them the size that I want them. I uploaded a uh, snowflake SVG that I had found and I just got everything the size I want and then I made sure that they were ready to cut and I made sure they were all the same color so that way when we come over here to our mat, we can cut them all at the same time. So I put anything that was red at the top, anything that I wanted white at the bottom. Now all of this was just based off that inspirational photo that I showed you guys that I found on Pinterest. And as an artist, we find inspiration from anywhere. So if you guys choose to do this same exact pattern, it's completely up to you. Or if you go into Pinterest and you find something that you're like, you know what, I'm gonna try this. I know that you guys can do this. I can't stress it enough. There is no right or wrong when it comes to doing art. Art is just your frame of mind. It's your imagination. It's what inspires you. It's what makes you make these tumblers. So whatever you decide to put on these is completely up to you. I'm just here to spark that imagination, to get your creativeness going. That's all I'm here to do. So as you guys seen through that video there, I went ahead and layered up my vinyls. I only did that because it's going on a skinny tumbler, which is very easy to apply vinyls to. So I went ahead and just layered everything up now. My tumbler is nice and cured and I am ready to apply my vinyls. Now I just kind of did, a, you know, randomly put them all over the, the tumbler, but you could align them up so that way you could have like a string coming down so it looks like they're actual ornaments, but I just kind of wanted them randomly all over my cup. So that's how I applied it. I had a little bubble in my vinyl and I'm gonna show you guys how I get rid of those little bubbles there. My little case here, that's where I store all my X-Acto knives and needles and whatnot. <laughs> and I actually have just a little needle. Yes, it's in a, it's in, uh, an eraser there, but hey. <laughs> And I'm just going to poke where that is at and I'm just going to take my nail and I'm just going to scrape along next to it and flatten out that bubble. See how it just disappeared? Now I'm just going to do that with any other little bubbles that I have there on my tumbler. It's just as easy as that and the epoxy will continue to hide any other little slight imperfections that the vinyls may have. Make it look even more like a felt ornament. I have some markers here. Now I purchased, or I, pur yeah, I purchased these through Michaels. I have a permanent marker here and then I also have a paint marker uh, from Recollections. They have like a whole section at Michaels there with nothing but markers and paint markers. So it was pretty cool. I had a good time just staring at the markers. <laughs> That's how you know you're a crafter, when, when you just really enjoy staring at markers. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take my uh, white marker here and I'm gonna outline the outside of my star. So pretty much anything that's red, I'm gonna use white, and anything that's white, I'm gonna use my red marker. So like I said, I'm just gonna come through. I'm gonna make that line here. You might have to double it up because sometimes that paint marker doesn't want to uh, get going. So you have to make sure you press it down really well. <laughs> so I'm gonna outline my, my star here and then I'm gonna make the lines to make it look like that whip stitch. Actually, I think the edge of these are called a buttonhole stitch or a uh, blanket stitch. So yes, we wanna duplicate that stitch. <laughs> So I'm just gonna go along every single piece of my vinyl here and duplicate this where I run my marker along the outside and then mimic that stitch on the inside. This is an extremely easy process to do and the outcome is so adorable. Like I said, I really enjoy these antique looking uh, ornaments, these felt ornaments. So I hope you guys enjoy making this as well. I'm just going to finish these up real quick and then we'll be ready to move on to the center stitching. And that is all done. How adorable. 
I can't wait to use this because obviously this one's mine. <laughs> So now I'm going to take my red marker that I have and I'm going to do the stitching on the inside of the white. Now the key is just to try to keep everything the same size and width. It, it's really simple. You don't have to fuss too much over it. You just want to kind of run your pen through here and just make it look like stitching. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect because again, it's supposed to look kind of antique, kind of homemade. That's exactly how you want it to look. So there's no right or wrong here, guys. Now, because I used a permanent marker, you want to make sure that you use a nice clear spray before you apply your epoxy, because if you don't, these markers will tend to run or the permanent markers, not the paint markers. So if you use a permanent marker, spray seal, if you use just a paint marker, it'll probably just be fine. So I'm just gonna finish up these stitches on the inside here and then we'll be ready to epoxy it. Now that I am almost done with that, I'm gonna take a quick look, make sure everything's okay. And I happen to notice that the white marker just wasn't as vibrant as I wanted it to be. So I kind of just came through and did one more uh, once over with my white marker across the edge of my vinyls here real quick. Now once I touch all these up, I want to make sure they're nice and dry before I add my epoxy. And again, I went ahead and I put a nice coat of clear seal across the entire tumbler because I used that permanent marker. So I'm just gonna mix up my A and B and I'm gonna give it a nice coating. And then you wanna let it cure for about eight hours before you add any other type of personalization. And then obviously after that, you wanna add a couple more coats, let that sit for a couple days and you'll be ready to ship out your tumbler. Whether you try to duplicate this design or make it something completely your own, I hope that you guys had fun watching this tutorial today. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more tutorials, vlogs, or tips, or products I have coming your way, and I will see you guys next time.